When I first moved to Australia and New Zealand, and I've been working in both environments, it'd be fair to say that I had a number of years from, say, 2002 to 2010, where Septoria tritici uh, blotch, uh, as it's commonly referred to, has not really been a problem for us. And it's really interesting that both in New Zealand and in Australia, we've seen an increase in the presence of this disease, particularly in southern Victoria and Tasmania. Septoria tritici blotch is actually a necrotrophic disease. It's a disease that instead of parasitizing the cells, it destroys the cells and effectively gains nutrition from the destruction of that tissue. And the disease is easy to see because it's got really distinctive black pycnidia. It's almost like black leg on wheat in that it's got those small fruiting bodies that are clearly visible on the older leaves. That's the infection base that's going to give rise to the secondary inoculum up the canopy. This is a stubble-borne disease. The spores are able to travel further than with yellow leaf spots. So Septoria tritici blotch is not a classic wheat on wheat disease. You can get those spores moving in to wheats that might follow canola, for instance. So in that respect, it's not quite so easy to say which parts of the rotation it's going to occur in. The other important thing to remember about this disease is it's a wet weather disease. So you're looking for that stem elongation period to be wet in order to actually get the secondary inoculum to spread up to the important leaves. And it's similar in that respect to a number of other important necrotrophic diseases like yellow leaf spot, for instance. You need, with Septoria tritici blotch, that wet weather to actually bring the disease up the canopy. You have to be careful with the I'll take care of it at flag leaf approach. This is a disease that has a very long latent phase typically, particularly if it's cool. So very often the crop can start to grow away and look clean. But if you've had a lot of rainfall events, you may well have hidden infection within those leaves. So it's quite important if you've got a good uh, base of inoculum at growth stage 31, 32, to actually consider a fungicide application at that stage rather than waiting all the way until flag leaf. If it was dry all the way until flag leaf, you could well be okay. But if it's not, by the time you get to flag leaf, you will already have considerable infection in the two leaves underneath the flag. But I think that the important thing with any disease is to actually look at what your resistance rating is for your cultivar that you're growing. And mixed with that, when are you thinking of growing that cultivar? Because the earlier you sow, I think potentially the more time you have to be exposed to the autumn winter inoculum phase, which is the primary infection phase from the stubble.